Hi, my name is Bogdan and this video is the first part of the semantic course. Today I'll try to explain basic things in semantics to you. And the first step we are going to make is to work out a theory a little bit. First of all, semantics is the study of meaning in language. By the way, semantic theory is part of the larger enterprise, linguistic theory, which includes the study of syntax and phonetics. Semantics, as other linguistic disciplines, concentrates on its whole on the similarities between languages. Let's start with two important distinctions. There is a speaker meaning and sentence meaning. A speaker meaning is what a speaker means when he uses a piece of language, and a sentence meaning is what a sentence means. This distinction is important in analyzing the various kinds of communication between people made possible by language. It's obvious that one thing that was written sometimes can mean particularly opposite. For example, if your wife is telling that your decision to go to the bar last night was very inconsiderate, you may answer a have a nice day and just leave. In this case, these words would not mean what they are supposed to mean in the ordinate small talk. Also, we need to understand that some of the sentences do carry information in a straightforward way, but also a lot of sentences do not give any information at all. They just keep the social wheels turning smoothly. For example, talks about the weather are uninformative. It does not really matter for the boss speakers whether the weather is good or not. They both just want to reassure that a friendly, courteous relationship exists between them. By the way, let's go on and start from some basics. Here are three definitions you should know. First is an utterance. Utterance is any stretch of talk by one person, before and after which there is silence on the part of the person. Utterances are physical events. It's what actually was said out loud if Mary said, I wasn't drunk yesterday. I wasn't drunk yesterday is an utterance. A sentence is not a physical event, it's a string of words put together by the grammatical rules of the language. Whales are animals, is a sentence. Actually, any book contains no utterances, is booked on talk or sentences, because they are too ideal for this. Next, a proposition. Proposition is that part of the meaning of the utterance of a declarative sentence which describes some states of affairs. In uttering a declarative sentence, a speaker typically asserts a proposition. In saying John can go, a speaker asserts a proposition that John can go. In saying can John go, he mentions the same proposition but merely questions his truth. The notion of truth can be used to decide whether two sentences express different propositions. Thus, if one is true, the other is false. They are surely different propositions. Propositions, unlike sentences, cannot be said to belong to any particular language. Sentences in different languages can correspond to the same proposition, if the uh, two sentences are perfect translations of each other, of course. English I am cold and German mir ist kalt can be said to correspond to the same prepositions. One may question whether perfect translation between languages is even possible. In point of fact, many linguists disagree about this and it is likely that absolutely perfect translation of the same preposition from one language to another is impossible. However, some scientists assume that in some cases perfect translation is possible. A proposition, is an, um, a proposition is an abstraction that can be grasped by the mind of an individual person. In this sense, a proposition is an object of thought. Do not equate propositions with thoughts, because thoughts are usually held to be private, personal, mental processes. Various propositions are public in the sense that the same proposition is accessible to different persons. Different individuals can grasp the same proposition. That's all for now. See you later.